What up, what up, what up, New York John Nation? It's your boy, Mike the Giants fan, coming back at y'all with another edition of Beer and the Story with Mike the Giants fan. And this is the start of a special series I'm going to be doing called the Super Bowl edition of Beer and the Story. It's going to be a five-part series, which is obviously I'm going to take y'all, give y'all little stories of of my how my how all the New York Giants Super Sundays went, how those days went for me, and how the game went. And obviously, no one of those games didn't go so well. But we won't be getting to that until part three anyway. But this will be off part one coming at y'all, which is going to be Super Bowl 21, the New York Giants versus the Denver Broncos, January of 1987. It was the 86 season. This edition of uh, Beer and the Story, I'm going to be sipping on this Dogfish Head Sunday Feels. It's a uh, Dogfish Brewery, a local Delaware brewery down in Lower Delaware. You know, I mean, they make some pretty good beer. They have a couple IPAs that I enjoy, a 60-minute IPA and 90-minute IPA. I recommend them for my IPA fans out there. Two pretty good ones. But this is a Beer Mosa Sour. It's not usually, I'm not a big, I'm not a big sour guy, but, but it seemed interesting. I wanted to give it a shot, you know what I mean? There's definitely some flavors going on in here that I think I would enjoy, so. Get this thing right. Baby, get that head right. Got to get that head right, you know what I mean? That's essential. Get that good head on there, you know what I mean? Got to get that head right on that. Woo! Get that head right on that on the top of that beer, baby. All right, so now it's game day, y'all. It's the 25th of January. About a month out, at least a month after Christmas. But I'm finally getting ready to get the gift that I had been waiting for. I'm going to get to watch my team, the New York Giants, play for their first ever Super Bowl championship. Being a little kid, I didn't have any plans going on for the day. Obviously, other than just sit around the house, watch all the all the pregame stuff. Game time, I was just going to be watching the game with my family because I was a little kid. I had to go to school the next day. Had nowhere to go, nowhere to be. I had become a Giant fan about a year prior to that. As soon as I recognized the talent of the, of the of the great number 56, you know, Lawrence Taylor. But Mox, I was so excited because as a lot of you may, some of you may know, a lot of you, this is the only Super Bowl that the New York Giants were even expected or favored to win out of their, all five of their appearances. So this was the only one where a win was expected. <laughs> Uh, this beer is quite tasty, actually. It's a, uh, it's different. Like I said, different than what I normally go for. Like I said, I'm not a big sour guy, but it's got some really good citrus flavors going on in there. Damn, I might need another one of these. Quite tasty. Ah, hit you right here in the back of the throat. Woo! A little hit you right in the back of your throat a little bit. Really, you can really, really taste and taste everything that's going on. So, I actually appreciate the difference. It's not something like probably not one I could go for every single day though. It's not, wouldn't be an everyday go-to beer, but it's definitely something for a little change of pace, something different. I could work with that. You know, so now it's finally game time, and I'm, I mean, I'm happy as hell. The game about to kick off finally. Boy, it kick off, and then everything's. Everything. The first quarter was pretty slow start. You know, what I mean, it was Broncos got out to a quick 10-7 lead in the first quarter, but not much going on otherwise. You know what I mean? Me being a little stupid little nine-year-old kid, I'm thinking the world's coming to an end. Giants supposed to be dominating this game. I'm wondering how in the hell are we losing. We supposed to be winning, and I'm acting like it's not plenty of time left. You know, I don't know any better though. I'm like I said, I was only nine. I still didn't have a full understanding of the game, but I just knew the Giants were my team, and I wanted them to win. And at the time, they were losing, so I was acting like a dumb little kid. But they're losing. <laughs> the typical stupid little kid, not who didn't know any better. So then, you know, the second quarter gets started, and it's. Seems like pretty much a little bit of the same. I mean, not much going on. Just both teams at this point playing great defense, actually. Pretty sensational defense getting played. I mean, nothing much to say. Nothing really happened in the second quarter other than the Giants picked up the safety. 
Broncos didn't score any more points, but they still went into the locker room at halftime, ten to nine, up ten to nine. But right now, this game is looking like it was just going to be a full-on defensive struggle. There's just not <laughs> not a lot of excitement going on yet. Phil Simmons was having a great day passing the ball. However, you know, like I said, it's great defense getting played, so it's just wasn't amounting to any points yet. But things was getting ready to change, pick up in the third quarter. Believe that. I'm actually, the more I sip on this, I'm starting to actually understand the beer most apart now. It's, it's like starting to click and make sense. Like, it's like, because I do kind of feel like I'm drinking a mimosa, you know what I mean? Like, now, I'm, the more I keep sipping on that, I feel like that would be a really great brunch beer. Like, you go out for brunch, that would be a good beer if they had that on tap somewhere where you were out having brunch at, I would recommend this beer for something like that if you're not like a straight up mimosa or a Bloody Mary type of person when you're eating, when you're having brunch. It's definitely, I'm definitely getting that. It's just like a mimosa beer style, actually. All right, now we here we come, baby. It's the third quarter and business is picking up. Business just picked up. The Giants came out on fire. They ran out the tunnel like a whole new football team. I don't know what the hell Bill Parcells said to them cats in the locker room. But whatever he said, he woke that whole team up because everything was cooking. Everything. Phil Simms was wheeling and dealing. Wheeling, wheeling and dealing on his way to a, to a very much deserved Super Bowl MVP award. I mean, it was just out of control. Everything was working. Like, we threw up 17 points on these jokers and just busted this game wide open, man. Like, it was, we just opened it up. Obviously, we shut them out in the third quarter. We just took over and just took and completely turned the whole complexion of this game around. And they didn't know what hit them. <laughs> it was like a buzzsaw. They had no clue what what the hell happened to them in the third quarter. But the Giants just came out and steamrolled them. Like I said, 17 unanswered points, and and it was just it was it was a beautiful thing to watch. Like I said, everything was working, man. <laughs> like on both sides of the football. Defense was still dominating. Offense finally started scoring some points. Yeah, I can get with this. Hit you right here in the back of the throat. That's all right. So here we are in the fourth, man. Obviously, we in full control now at this point. And we just went on ahead and basically iced it early in the fourth. We kicked, add on another touchdown to make that score 33 to 10. And that was it. That was that was it. That, at that point, the Broncos knew that it was it was their time was up because <laughs> the Giants' defense was just way too good. You just there was no coming back at that point. So you know, what I mean, that score definitely sealed the deal. Garbage time. The Broncos tacked on another 10 points. Giants tacked on another touchdown, make the final score 39 to 20. That capped off the New York Giants' first ever Super Bowl victory. We got to get ready to watch that confetti drop. And everybody in New York Giant land was so happy because they knew it was getting ready to be a, a parade for the first time for the New York Giants. At least for the first time in some years, anyway, because the Giants hadn't won a, hadn't won any kind of a world championship since like the '60s. So it was good 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 times in New York. As for this beer right here, like I said, this a uh, beer Mosa sour is called Sunday Fields. It's tasty, and like I guess I recommend it for any like brunch aficionados. It would be a, definitely a good brunch beer, good alternative if you like, you know, a fellow like me that. Rather have a beer than like a mimosa or a Bloody Mary when you out having your little brunch, you know what I mean? And uh, but if it's, if you're a true sour lover, I wouldn't probably recommend it to you if you're a true sour lover, cause the sour is pretty tame. It's pretty tame in here, so I would uh. But if uh from Dogfish Brewery in particular, they have a sour beer that is called Sequench. That if you are a suit a true sour lover, I'd recommend that one. I highly recommend that one. That's a very tasty beer. For all you true sour lovers, that'll make you pucker up a little bit. This here, ain't, this, this ain't puckering you up too much. This just tastes good. <laughs> this just tastes good. Like I said, I'm not a big sour guy, but if you are out there, all you sour lovers, I recommend the sequence. 
as opposed to this for you for your people that love like a good sour beer. But this is a good tasty beer. I still recommend it, like I said, for people that go out and have brunch and things like that. It's definitely a good good compliment. And like Sims was the true story of this game though, man. Like 22 or 25, 268 yards, three touchdowns, a QB rating of 150. He was spreading the ball all around, all over the field. Absolute epic performance. I'm pretty sure his completion percentage rating for this game still stands to this day as a record. It's looking pretty untouchable. I think I think Tom Brady did get close to it, but I'm not. I think he fell a little bit short of it. I mean, defense absolutely dominant as it was all season long. This was the first. I I feel like this is the only New York Giants defense in the history of their, that I've at least as far as I know anyway of my lifetime that was just pure absolutely dominant for a season, not a stretch of a season, not a game here and a game there. I'm talking about absolute dominance for an entire season, which carried over from the 85 season, where they were pretty pretty damn good then, too. And in 80, where they just came a little bit short of the Super Bowl in 85, took went into 86, carried it over, and the defense was, this was the, the one year the New York Giants truly had an intimidating and scary defenses that offenses were scared to play, did not look forward to playing, Nobody, we were not a we were not a laughing stock by no means. Back in those days, the New York Giants defense was absolutely legit, a historic defense in the NFL. Doesn't get talked about much when you bring up, bring up the historic defenses like the 2000 Baltimore Ravens, which we are all too familiar with, obviously, and uh, and and defenses like that. Like it doesn't come up to 85 Bears defense. We're not we don't really get brought up in those, but I feel like we should be a little bit. Should be at least mentioned. I'm not necessarily saying we, this def our defense in '86 was better than those defenses I just mentioned, but at the same time, we should be in the conversation. I feel like we don't get brought up enough. Defense played really well all season that year, and it carried over into the Super Bowl on its way to a to a to a championship. And this game was absolutely the game that just solidified my decision to be a New York Giants fan. And 35 years later, I stand by that decision, man. It will never change. I said, bury me in my Michael Strahan jersey. I already told him that. I told everybody that. That's what I want. Bury me in my Michael Strahan jersey. That's how real it is. 25th of January, 1987, man. That, that confetti was dropping and Phil Sims would look into that camera and be the first Super Bowl MVP. Yes, I said it. The first Super Bowl MVP to utter those world famous words. I'm going to Disney World, baby. Phil Sims. He's the one that coined that. All these years later, it's still a thing. It don't look like it's ever going nowhere now. It's tradition. Phil Sims started that 1987, January 25th, 1987. Phil Sims, remember that. The first, the pioneer of the World famous, I'm going to Disney World for the Super Bowl MVP. So that's going to do it for this edition of Being a Story with Mac the Giants fan. Peace. I'd like to thank you all for listening. If you was feeling this, please take time to subscribe and smack them likes. Feel free to drop a comment and let me know what you think. Don't forget to ring that bell so you know when I'm dropping new content. It's your boy, Mac the Giants fan. You can find me on Twitter, YouTube, and Facebook at Mac the Giants fan. That's M A C D A Giants fan. As I take this one last sip for you.